Old School RuneScape is an older MMORPG, and unlike World of Warcraft, it doesn't support plugins or any programmability uh, officially. However, most people today they play using third-party clients uh, that are programmable. An example of this is RuneLight. This is the client you see running here. I can show you right here how many uh, I'm talking about. This is the official number, how many players locked into the game, and it's uh, 107,000. Now over to RuneLight where uh, they have uh, 67 thousand uh, connections to the game servers. And calculate the percentage and it's 62% uh, of the online players that use RuneLight right now. If you look at the website or gameplay from this client, it's clear that this client is, uh, it has plugins and it is programmable. So how is this done? And the answer is, of course, client hacking. And client hacks, they have existed for uh, decades, almost, and uh, they're used for botting. Well, the hacked clients, they're, uh, most of them are used for botting. But recently, uh, and interestingly, uh, we've gotten uh, legitimate clients, right? That, uh, like this RuneLight client that doesn't uh, break any rules or attempt to, to do any macroing in the game. So how is this done? Well, luckily for us, this game is uh, based on Java technology, so uh, we can investigate. To start our investigation, we have to be curious. So I'm, I'll start here by opening up Wireshark, and then I'll start the capture, and I will start the client, the old school RuneScape client. Then that will load. Awesome. Now I can look at all the traffic that occurred uh, when I started the game. And I will sort by protocol. Now I'm going to find all the HTTP requests. Here we are. So we can see the first one. We get this uh, URL here. We can see the full URL, uh, but this is the response. Uh, we got a 302, that's a redirect. And then we get a request to this URL. So if we investigate this, we see a full request URL. I will just copy that and Go to that in the browser. I made a mistake here. Nice. Now we get this uh, configuration for the game. These are parameters that helps the game uh, load. And this is what the client requests when it starts. Awesome. Notably here we have a initial jar which contains game pack and we have initial class so we can start uh, the game. Also it has a code base. If we go back into Wireshark, we can see that we actually download this game pack uh, right away afterwards. So uh, this is what the client does, so we're on the right way. We're on the right path. So now that we've identified that the client loads the game pack, uh, maybe we should do the same thing. So I'm taking the code base here and pasting that and then uh, I will grab the game pack. Naturally this will download the game pack for us and we can show that in folder and there it is we can even open it with the uh, 7-zip and we can see all the classes in here. These are all the compiled Java classes, they contain just bytecode and all the names are refactored. Uh, they were something else before, but in order to obfuscate and make it harder to reverse engineer, they have uh, 
uh, changed all the names to uh, nonsense. Now that we have the game pack, we can um, initialize it just like the client does uh, if we want to, and then we would have a simple uh, loader. There's an, an excellent project here that does uh, just this by uh, Nikki. This is the first one that I ever saw uh, that did that, and you can use that as a reference if you're interested in, uh, in doing this. Now we can look even further into this game pack uh, by using a program called Java Decompiler, which I have open here, and I just drag the jar into it, and we can see all the files out here. Um, still with the nonsense names, and now we can also see the source code. This is a decompiler, and the class files, they contain uh, all the fields and methods, and uh, for each method they contain instructions and those uh, instructions they can be um, reverse engineered to create uh, source code. Sometimes the source code will be uh, unreadable uh, as you can tell by looking at this class it is uh, not good to look at. So uh, they do obfuscation with the instruction set as well uh, I would believe, or they at least do uh, many different types of obfuscation here. If we look into the class, uh, the client class, that's the class that they uh, said would be the entry point of the application, and we can see that, that uh, it's a very long class, many, many, many fields, and it doesn't really have a, a main method. If I search here for main. I just get a bunch of hits for these files, but no main method. Uh, I can illustrate this better, I think, by going public. Let's see if we can find that. Public static void. We have a D, and that's the only thing. So. Uh, if we go up here, we can see that the client extends BR and implements TK. Now we can uh, see what that is. BR is an applet, so we gather that a client is also an applet, uh, which helps us when we uh, want to initialize it. Also, ooh, it's a runnable and focus listener and Windows window listener. Uh, those are classes we know, so that's uh, uh, reassuring. It's also a canvas here. Uh, good stuff. Now, uh, I want to show you uh, this class right here, GA. This class, uh, it doesn't have any uh, any superclass notably, and it ha just has two references to itself and a long, and then it has these methods. Now look uh, closely at these methods. This FC and this FD method, they are uh, identical. I, yes, they are identical. So I think this is obfuscation as well. Uh, they create these duplicate methods, uh, so when I look at it, I don't know which one they use. So this seems like kind of a dead end with all this obfuscation and these duplicate methods. What do we do? Uh, fortunately, uh, we have uh, Java bytecode editors, uh, libraries that can edit these class files and analyze them and help us uh, write code that analyzes them as well. One of these is ASM, which is a, a nice uh, library for it. It has uh, good documentation and uh, right here, actually from the main page, there's a link to user guide, which is a, a giant PDF document and it has a lot of uh, code, um, example code for how to use it and how to do different things. So, uh, I, for instance, I used um, this, I was interested in removing class members, but uh, I ended up finding it here in transformation chains. Uh, this uh, goes over how you can uh, write a parser that goes through each of these uh, uh, files and then um, writes corresponding files. Uh, and then when it encounters something specific, it can uh, choose not to write those. Uh, that would be these methods. In, in my case, I would write a parser that goes through all of these uh, methods. And uh, when it encounters this 
uh, FC, for instance, it will uh, it will prune it in a way. Unfortunately, we still have to find out which of these methods are the uh, correct one. Uh, I just noticed down here we have FV as well, which is also similar. So now there are three competing methods. So which ones do we uh, remove? Now, uh, with this ASM library in hand, uh, I wrote a program right here that uh, does all this that we've done uh, so far manually. It does it automatically. It downloads the, the game pack and, uh, and then it, it loads all the classes. Uh, here we have a method that uh, takes the jar file and then uh, loads it all into uh, a hash map using the tree part of ASM. And we can see here in the output I tagged redundant methods. Um, I implemented an algorithm that goes through every uh, instruction in the classes and it finds out when methods are called. And then I made a list of all the methods that are called and all the methods that are never called. And then I did what I described before, uh, where uh, I uh, changed the classes, write new classes and then save those uh, as a jar. And those are saved uh, here in uh, this folder. We can open here. Great. Now, if I open up the game pack it just downloaded, and go down to my GA class, we can see these uh, three competing methods still. And if we now take the hacked uh, game pack where I removed those methods with a algorithm then open up the GA class and here we can see uh, much more close to what is actually used uh, in the class uh, this is a bit cleaner and it, it, it helps uh, to understand this client now uh, from the start there were 7305 methods 4300 of those were removed uh, they were redundant, so I think I, that surprised me that they uh, would uh, put so much uh, dead code in the client. Another way to see this is using the CJBE uh, program uh, that also uh, looks at uh, bytecode. You can load an entire GA here, I will load the game pack, and then find the GA class here, and we can see uh, what this file contains. Uh, we can see the access flags, um, it's public, and then we can see the superclass, we can also see uh, the fields and the methods. Now notice there are many many methods here, uh, right? Uh, these are competing methods, they're here because I loaded the game pack before uh, the hack. So uh, the descriptor here, it tells us this is a void and doesn't return anything. Um, this C, for instance, this means uh, boolean, I believe. Uh, that may be wrong. <laughs> anyway, if I look up uh, the uh, corresponding class in the hack client, we now see that the signature uh, for the methods is, uh, is changed. It's only the constructor left, and then uh, this void, and then the C signature. I think that's... Uh, yeah, that's a boolean. That's the FO method. Yeah, it is. To make sure I didn't delete too many methods, I made uh, the program export the methods that it removes. And there we go. Uh, here, this is a list that contains all the methods, the class it's found in, the method name, and then the signature. You can see uh, how this, you can search through this and find specific signatures right inside specific classes um, we have with ASM access to more than I show here but these are the methods that uh, are removed now um, this looks all good uh, because it works fine however when I made this I encountered a, a bug that uh, made an interesting result and I will recreate that bug for you um, 
in my method removal tool, I didn't, uh, or I, I removed a two string as well. All the two string methods that weren't referenced in the code base, and uh, those can have it ex uh, they can have references um, in some cases where it's called without being called or something. I don't know. It didn't, uh, it removed them. So now I made a specific uh, check, which I have disabled now. And I will run the client uh, to show you the result of that. Here's the client. It loads uh, fine and it works fine. Um, and I will prove this by selecting a German world. And then excuse me while I log in privately here. I am certain that uh, the makers of this game can uh, see that I am on a hacked client. So I am sacrificing my account to make this video. And you can see it locked in, no errors, no errors at all. This is just beautiful, uh, right? It works. I can even bank, you can see my bank. Awesome. Uh, I even made uh, it resizable. Great. Uh, however, whenever we right click something, we can see that the names are uh, just these KU something. And that's because the two string method uh, from the player class, I believe was removed. So now uh, it returns uh, something it shouldn't or something it like it's natural uh, the natural two string method for a class I think which is just its uh, memory name or pointer name to the instance in the JVM uh, that's how I understood it and I found that interesting but let's uh, let's fix it and see if that makes any change Great, loads up and I will log in here. Probably not log in. Nope, need a member's account. All right. And now when I right click someone, you can see that it's fixed. Uh, it displays their name uh, correctly. Awesome. Uh, now this is uh, resizable, I'm, I mentioned that before, and uh, it's not supposed to go in uh, this far. Uh, and if you go in too far, you can even you can even crash it. Go in like oh, that's even pretty pretty far. Oh, that's and there we go. Error, game crash, game crash. Fine. So. Where do you go from here? Uh, well, you uh, look at the the game pack uh, that you made, and then you see if you can understand more of it. And uh, you can start renaming the fields, and then uh, someday in the far future, you will have a, a completely clean client and a good overview of how it all works. Um, some people also inject code into it. Uh, I mentioned the method I use. it. Uh, requires me to read the entire uh, code base and then uh, write it again uh, with my changes uh, and that would be the same way you could uh, inject code uh, as well. Um, you can use software like this Java Decompiler or you can use uh, something like this which is called CLSVIS I believe here uh, we can open we can load from GR file and then we can locate the hacked game pack and then I can see uh, all the classes Ooh. maybe I can just search for client here oh I can great and double click that and I can see the relationship of this class uh, to other classes. I could also find the uh, GA class here uh, that is and we can find the classes that 
uh, references in a kind of uh, UML uh, kind of way. And to make this less uh, tedious and frustrating because you can use many nights uh, doing this, changing the client this way, uh, you can ally with people uh, like yourself, such as on Ars Hacking. There's a, a community there and a Discord there. You can uh, talk to people that are doing this. And there's also Open OSRS Project, which I discovered way too late. Uh, it's a it's a project like uh, the one I showed you, where they change the client and they uh, deobfuscate the client. Oh, that was the wrong. They have a GitHub as well with all their code on it very very useful as a reference uh, they have the runelight project which contains the runescape client and then in here you can see the entire source code uh, of the client where they have uh, refactored it so my GA class for instance is called node in here and we can find it a lot of nodes yeah there it is node and uh, I can see the obfuscated name in here GA so in my code when I recognize uh, the GA class as being the node class I know now that's correct and I can also see uh, what methods they think uh, they think the FD method is removed for instance and they have here uh, more easily readable code to understand to uh, to explain the method um, great stuff all right, thank you uh, for watching this lengthy video and I will see you in a year for the next video.